In this video, we're going to introduce modifying geometry, and we're going to focus on Boolean operations. The tools we're going to talk about today can be found in the Modify palette. So I'm going to tear that off and put it in the upper left here and introduce a couple of tools that we're going to use today. And the Union tool, as you can tell from the icon, merges geometry together. And the Difference tool will subtract one volume from another volume. So using solids, we're going to be able to take away from a a base object using another object to do that cutting. In this exercise, I'm going to start off with this cube. I'm going to build some additional cubes and we're going to talk about how to build these and how to move them and position them so that they're in this orientation. Then we're going to move that into place and we're going to subtract it away from this volume here. So this last piece of the diagram kind of shows you what's going to happen we're going to take this chunk out of that initial cube volume. So let's get started. As we've covered in the last couple of videos, there are multiple ways to make geometry. So I'm going to use the generate command and the cube command. And I'm just going to select the preset cube command and type in width, depth, and height of 24 feet each. And then using my grid snap tool, I can click right at the origin of the axes and generate a 24 foot cube. That places the cube directly at that 0, 0, 0 origin point at the base of the bottom plane of that cube. There's lots of ways to build a cube, which we've already talked about a couple of them. In this one, I just want to talk about positioning that. It's not crucial that it's at the origin of this project, but I think this is a nice opportunity to introduce coordinates. For example, if I wanted to build a cube, obviously I could build that anywhere I want. After I've set the width, depth, and height, I can click and it just creates cubes wherever I want. What I'm going to do is delete that initial cube that I built, go back to the cube tool, click somewhere off of the origin, and then I'm going to go to the pick tool to just select it, make sure it's selected, and open my inspector palette. And we can see in the info tab where that object's origin actually sits. So you can see based on my grid snap, because I had it set at the one foot increment, it did place it on the one foot increments in the X and Y plane. What I can do now is I could actually just type new numbers in. So I could type in zero, hit the tab key, you can see now that it snapped to the zero X axis. And if I tap zero and hit tab again, you can see that cube snaps right to the origin of the project file at zero, zero, zero. Now, one last way to do this before we start getting to our modification tools, I'm just gonna delete that cube again. I'm gonna click on my cube tool. Again, my width, depth, and height are already set. I'm gonna actually go to my coordinate readout in my modeling window here and type zero and then hit the tab key, zero, zero, and then just hit enter on the keyboard and the cube shows up right at those coordinates. So that's another way to do it. So again, you can change the coordinates of an object before or after you build that geometry. Now let's start to build the parts that we're going to subtract from this base cube. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here just to fill the screen a little bit. This time I'm going to use the rectangle tool instead of the cube tool because this is just another way to build things. And the first object that I want to design, I want it to be a very specific dimension. So I'm going to just click somewhere out here on my grid, again snapping at the one foot increment. I'm going to click and you'll see at the top of the modeling window that we have a length and width entry. And remember we can change this during the creation of an object using this method. Of course, we can change it afterward, but I'm going to type in the exact size that I want this cube as I'm building it. So we can see here that if I pull to the right, we're affecting the length dimension. And if I pull kind of northeasterly, I am modifying the width dimension. You'll notice that there is a highlight around my length field right now. So in the length field, I'm going to type in six feet and I'm going to hit the tab key to jump over to the width. I'm going to type 15 feet. I'm going to hit enter, and once I do that, a new height field shows up, and at my height, I'm going to type 15 feet as well and hit enter. So now my cube that I just built is 6 feet by 15 by 15, and I'm going to go back to my select tool just to make sure that that object is selected, and I'm going to click on the parameters tab, and I can see those numbers that I typed in, 
And if I wanted to make modifications to this parametric object, I can do so after the fact as discussed in the previous videos. What I want to do now is create the next cube that I'm going to use for my subtraction. Similarly to last time, I'm going to define my next cube by the footprint using the rectangle tool, and I am going to set my grid snap to three feet this time, because every piece of geometry that I'm creating here is going to be on a three foot module, so I think that just makes sense. And I'm going to click on my grid anywhere, and you can see it kind of picked a middle of a grid because that's on the three foot module. Each major grid line is on a 10 foot module and there's five subdivisions. So that means that every minor grid line is on a two foot module. So that's why that point is right in the middle of one of these. I'm just going to drag off here and set this up graphically. So I'm going to go 12 feet by six feet. And then I'm going to go up another six feet to define that cube. And I have one more cube that I'm going to make. So once again, I'm going to use the rectangle tool. And this time, instead of drawing the rectangle starting on the reference plane, I'm going to actually build it in place right on top of the second cube that we built. So what I'm going to do is you'll notice in my object snaps that I have point snaps turned on. Sometimes point's good. Sometimes end point is good. Your mileage may vary which one works better in different circumstances. I'm going to just go ahead and turn them both on. What I want to do is begin by snapping to this far right point on this cube. And you'll notice as I hover over different faces, my reference plane shifts around to kind of help me because this is going to be the base of the next rectangle that I draw. And because I want to draw it on top of this cube, this is the orientation of the reference plane that I really want. So I'm going to be careful not to go too far over the edge. You'll see if I go over the edge, the reference plane jumps back down here to its default position. So I want to be careful in where I actually hover, close to the edge, but not over it. All right, so hovering closely, I click my first corner point to get that established on the top of this cube. And this time I'm going to go six feet this way, three feet that way, and I'm going to just go up some arbitrary height for now. All right, so I'll just go up nine feet. And now you can see that that fourth cube is actually built on top. So you can start with your geometry down on the reference plane, or you can build it in place, or of course you can move it into place after the fact, which is exactly what we're gonna do next and introduce you quickly to the move tool. The move tool is found under the T form palette, which is also known as the transform palette. And you'll see that there is the move tool. And in here we have several different transformation tools. We have move, rotate, independent scale, and so on. We're just gonna concern ourselves with the move tool right now. And when I click on the move tool, in the tool options, you'll see that there are also the ability to copy objects. I'm not gonna copy anything right now, but I want you to be aware that these are here. We'll talk more about these in a future video. For now, we're just gonna move this object by itself and not make copies. And what I'm gonna do, again, using my object snaps is I'm going to hover over a corner and then snap to another known corner on another piece of geometry here, which was the second cube that we built, and click again to place that object exactly adjacent to and coplanar with this object. Coplanar means that these two faces because I used an object snap, are directly in alignment with one another. They are both planes, and they are both aligned, and therefore they are coplanar. And if I rotate around this, you can see that those are perfectly aligned. And because I built this cube on top of this one, using that known point on that cube as a starting location to draw it, these two faces are also coplanar. So coplanar is a good term to get familiar with inside of Form Z. It really helps you out, especially when you're gonna be doing Boolean operations that objects faces align so that it cuts exactly like you expect that it's going to cut. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is just kind of move these a little bit off to the side so we can see our initial cube a little more clearly. So again, using the pick tool, I'm going to select these three cubes by selecting the first one, holding down the shift key to select the next one, and then holding down the shift key to select the third one. Now you'll notice they're all highlighted in red. Again, clicking on the move tool. I'm just gonna click and move these kind of off to the side, just again for visual clarity. And we have a lot of tool palettes open here. I'm gonna go ahead and close these down to just kind of clean things up. Now. 
What I want to show you is the Boolean union tool first. And before I do that, what I'm going to do is make a copy of these objects off to the side so we can notice the difference here. So using the move tool, I'm going to this time select the one copy tool and I'm going to move a copy of those objects over to the right. So that's a quick and easy way to make copies of geometry. And it's probably a good concept to get used to is making copies of your objects and kind of stashing them off to the side. Because if you ever need to get back to a previous step that maybe you've saved and you can no longer undo your project file back to that point, it's nice to have some extra geometry. It's not taking up much space and uh, just stash it off to the side. So we're going to go ahead and pull open our modified tool palette and we're going to click on the union tool here. And you'll notice in the tool options, there's not really any options except for keep edges. I'm not going to turn that on because I want you to see how these objects actually get glued together. And under the action palette here, union, it says creates a new object by combining two or more solids or surfaces. So I'm going to click on this object and a second object, which is what Formz is expecting here, you'll see. Click, select the second object, and you can shift click to select additional objects. So we could do all of these at once, but I'm just gonna do these first two to show you exactly what happened. And you'll notice that that seam between the two objects, and because these faces are coplanar, went away. It disappeared completely. Now, if I rotate underneath these objects, you'll see that the seam underneath them went away as well. So this now has become a single object. It no longer functions as two separate objects. So whereas these objects on the right, if I click on them, you'll notice my parameters here. I can still modify those parameters. It was a parametric cube that I started off using the rectangle. Each one of these has different parameters. This object no longer has those parameters. So this object has been modified beyond the ability now to change it parametrically, where this cube up here still has parameters involved. But not for long, because we're going to, again, use the Boolean tool to select an object and then select another object to union to the first object. So I'm gonna click on this piece up here. And now those are also glued together and the seams between those objects disappeared. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to get notified when new videos are released on this channel, click the subscribe button below and click the notification bell icon to get a notification when new videos are released. See you in the next one.